We need to rise above the persecution. We need to hold rogue prosecutors accountable. There should be no immunity. We need to expose the Democrats' corruption, and better yet, the Biden family's corruption. And guess what? I know just the man for that job. Donald J. Trump has only one conviction that matters, and that is his conviction to make America great again. Thank you, and God bless America. I'm Andrea Chalupa, a journalist and filmmaker, and the writer and producer of the journalistic thriller Mr. Jones, the film The Kremlin, and every delegate at the RNC Nazi Fest doesn't want you to see, so be sure to watch it. Our opening clip was reality TV star Savannah Chrisley, an RNC speaker whose parents are currently in prison for fraud. That family is from that reality TV show that none of us watch called Chrisley Knows Best. The parents, the Chrisleys, Mr. and Mrs. Chrisley, I don't know their, their full names. The parents got busted by the feds <laughs> for fraud. And I think the dad got like 12 years in prison and the mom got seven Savannah, you're not going to be seeing your folks for a while. I mean, you do have visitation rights, but it's it's going to be a really awkward time for you and the rest of the fraudsters at the RNC. I just think that's just, it's disgusting, all of these criminals on parade at the RNC. Anyway, so the Republican convention, let's get to it, a who's who of criminals. It was like Oscar night of kleptocracy. Um, they were calling for death of prosecutors. It was really like anti-brown people, anti-immigrants, anti-prosecutors. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm laughing. I'm just like, I have so much to say. I've been podcasting with a lot of friends on the phone, calling up so many people, and I wish I would have just recorded it all and just played it for you. And I hope I can save some of that for you now in this show. All right, so um, some of the infamous convicted felons that have been pardoned by Trump that we saw at the RNC, of course, Roger Stone, Paul Manafort, uh, Rod Blagojevich, <laughs> and Peter Navarro. They chanted for mass deportations, which includes snatching people from schools, bus stops, businesses, their homes. The Republicans want a mass deportation of 15 million people, unleashing a reign of terror Political prisoners who are immigrants or children or grandchildren of, of immigrants will get swept up in those Gestapo raids. Santiago Mayor of Voters of Tomorrow, a Gen Z group, wrote on Twitter, Every speech at the RNC has been dedicated to demonizing immigrants, to calling us rapists, calling us murderers, calling us criminals, to talking about how they must get rid of us. This is not a party trying to unify the country. It's a party preparing for ethnic cleansing. Several news outlets are reporting that Biden may step down in the coming days. I don't believe it. I, th I think a lot of those leaks, uh, those narratives are being placed by people who are pushing Biden to step down. And the more they can flood the media with this claim, the more they think they can make it true. Uh, by And, they, and it's, it's a cat laser pointer for the media. The, the more they can leak this, claim this, the more the media will focus on it. And the hope is that Biden will be just so overwhelmed that he'll finally uh, step step down. But I don't think it's coming because he's defiant and he has been getting some uh, major support, which we'll cover in this episode. Terrell Starr of the Essential Black Diplomats podcast and Substack will join me on Tuesday to discuss the latest developments. So stay tuned for Tuesday's show where we ask ourselves, does Usha Vance hate herself or is the Peter Thiel money that good? Um, yeah, so anything, if anything dramatic happens between now and Tuesday, just wait for Tuesday's show where Terrell and I process it together. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be, I don't know about you, if you're having a hard time sleeping, you are not alone. All right, quick announcement. September 16th, we're having that live taping at the Ukrainian Museum of America in New York City. It's a beautiful building, the best building, the greatest building there ever was. It's, it's really a nice mansion. It's, it's an old neoclassical stately mansion. I love it dearly. And I've gone to events there to support Ukraine. And I'm so honored and thrilled. We're going to have a wine reception and a live taping of Gaslit Nation with special guests. That's 7 p.m. Eastern on Monday, September 16th. It's to celebrate the launch of my new graphic novel, In the Shadow of Stalin, The Story of Mr. Jones, which is essentially the shooting script of my 
film with uh, deleted scenes or else the movie would have been three hours long. It's, it's a very special project I've worked on for years and I'm honored and thrilled to share it with you all. Come through New York and listeners near New York, I want to hang out with you, so please come, especially since we all may be locked up if Trump wins. This may be our last chance to see each other, so come to the live taping of Gaslit Nation in person at the Ukrainian Institute of America on September 16th. Thank you to everyone who attended our phone bank with Indivisible on Thursday night. We made over 7,000 phone calls in around an hour. We had a bit of a break to enjoy ourselves and give away some fun prizes. To join our next phone bank party, we're calling for Lucas Kuntz for Senate in Missouri. That will be Thursday, August 15th at 7 p.m. RSVP with the link in the show notes. Excited to see you then. And until then, keep the faith. Don't panic. Do the work. These phone bank parties really do make a difference. It's extraordinary the conversations you have. My biggest problem with phone banking is I te- I, I don't know how it happens, but I fall into heart to hearts with people. So I, a lot of my time gets spent really connecting with voters across the country, which I love to do. It becomes a little mini podcast conversation between us. But then I I make less phone calls as a result. So the biggest danger I'm telling you of phone banking in my experience of doing this for years is you're going to is the, you're going to fall into a big old <laughs> big old slumber party fest, all right, with somebody on the other line because people are just so anxious right now. They independents, Republicans, Democrats, you name it, they know that Trump is a Nazi. And so people need to get a call. They need to hear you. They need to get a call from somebody that that cares. And they have so much they want to unload. And that really, it's, you know, I want, I want to make as many calls as possible, but I also want to help people process what's going on and understand that they're not alone wherever they are, especially in these so-called Republican hostage states. So phone banking works, it matters, and, and people just like you are scared too, and they need to hear from you. It really is a beautiful, a beautiful time. And I hope to see you all August 15th. We're making phone calls to Missouri. We're coming for you. <laughs> all right. As you may have seen, Russia's foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, endorsed Trump's vice president running mate, the Peter Thiel project known as J.D. Vance one of the staunchest Kremlin disinformation agents in Congress. Trump is old, tired, and losing it. As his diarrhea of the mouth convention speech, the longest in history, showed, Trump had to have Hulk Hogan there for strongman fascist vibes since Trump himself is diminished. He even dozed off, especially when Don Jr. was talking because he just hates his kids. I know from a reliable source that Don Jr. hates his father and is using him for the money and power. Also, fun video from the convention, Tiffany got snubbed when she went in for a kiss from her father and he totally ignored her. She acted completely unfazed by it like she's used to it. Another highlight was idiot son Eric talking about how his family does not enrich themselves and the CNN camera quickly cut to Jared and Ivanka in the audience. Well done, CNN. That still does not redeem you for some of the Trump propaganda you've been running lately. All right, so let's get to some questions from our listeners at the Democracy Defender level and higher that make our show possible. Jeremy writes, question, it seems like this movement for Biden to step down is not going anywhere soon. I cannot help but look back at the parallels of the 2016 election. Yep. Uh, Republicans used hysteria to help win the election. It seems like the top Democrats and donors are using the same tactic to get Biden to step down by creating hysteria through statements, letters, and leaks to news outlets that Democrats rely on. Have these tactics been used in the past? If so, what was the outcome for the nation? Well, as I mentioned in a recent episode, I think we saw this same phenomenon happen against Howard Dean in 2004. And last place, John Kerry was then anointed by his fellow establishment Democrats to be the party nominee that year. And he lost. He lost to George W. Bush. And Bush got a second term and rained his hellfire down on America, including um, the gambling den of Wall Street, uh, collapsing the global economy. And countless people around the world lost their savings, lost their retirements, lost their jobs. So that was the outcome of that, Jeremy. Um, And establishment Dems, of course, rallied around uh biden in the 2020 democratic primary like some transformer uh it was just you know warren and and bernie and julian castro and others didn't stand a chance it was all biden so they they basically had that same impact there and biden won and and 
did some great things like for labor, for, you know, with, for, um, alternative energy and, and other things. And also some not so great things, um, as we've, you know, obviously Gaza and, and, and he was slow and little doing a little too much hand wringing when it came to getting Ukraine, everything it needed in some crucial, uh, in the early hours of the war and, and not stockpiling Ukraine enough uh, to prepare for Mike Johnson's MAGA blockade. Anyway, so, um, that, that's sort of the most dramatic time we've seen. It was like the Howard Dean example and what's happening now. I will get to right now <laughs> about the whole update on Biden being pushed out. The knives are out reports that Pol Queen Pelosi, that's how they, the press likes to frame her. She had the fact that she's on board and trying to wake up Biden with, with the abysmal polling numbers is a really strong sign that this movement's not going anywhere, especially in these critical final weeks leading up to the convention in Chicago in mid-August. Schumer had a heart to heart. So did Jeffries. Raskin sent a big old letter saying pass the torch. Clyburn, who basically secured the nomination for Biden in 2020, he's a he's a congressman, a black congressman from uh, South Carolina. Clyburn said, we, we need to move on. Biden needs to step down. And then you have three senators, the one from Vermont, that, whose name no one knows. And then Senator Tester of Montana, Senator Heinrich of New Mexico. It's a long list. And I want to build on something I shared in our Patreon chat group, where I've been releasing a lot of my nerves <laughs> lately. Thank you to all the folks in there chatting away with me. I really appreciate your company. So I understand people have legit concerns about Biden. As for the members of Congress and their mega donors campaigning for Biden to resign, where was this level of organization when it came to pushing out Merrick Garland as he both cited the coup and ran out the clock for two years? Where was this energy to rally for a special prosecutor to investigate Jared and Ivanka and, and their Saudi billions and how they enriched themselves in the White House? Why haven't we seen this same effort to ensure a special prosecutor to investigate every client of Jeffrey Epstein, including Trump? I had no idea establishment Dems could move like this. Too bad it's selective. So who is standing by Biden? Hillary and Bill are fighting for him, along with some of their Hollywood friends, as well as Senator Jackie Rosen of Nevada, which Biden needs to win. House Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries came out to support Biden, saying this on Friday. President Biden, as I've said repeatedly, is our nominee. He has a tremendous track record of success. He's one of the most accomplished uh, American presidents in our history. And he has the vision... I believe the ability, the capacity, and the track record to make a case to the American people that will result in us being successful in November. Why would Jeffries change his mind? Because the rep earlier reporting was saying that he had a heart-to-heart -heart with Biden about stepping down. Well, Jeffries represents bed -Stuy. Do you know how many black women there are in bed -Stuy, Brooklyn? Okay, Latasha Brown of Black Voters Matter, one of the most impactful voter groups representing the heart and soul of the democratic backbone black women organized a letter of over 1400 black women supporting the biden and harris ticket and calling on democratic party elites to cut it out um so yeah jeffries is not going to he as a black man representing bed -Stuy, brooklyn pretty much has to do with black women want him to do and black women have spoken they want biden harris cut it out everyone else um and then of course bernie and aoc are riding with biden which is upsetting a lot of uh, progressives people on the left um, a biden source recently said anonymously of course that the biggest block to getting biden to step down is that there's a clear effort to bypass kamala harris a black woman who had the most progressive voting record in the Senate. How do we know this? Because several of the Democratic leaders calling for Biden to, quote, pass the torch are also calling for an open convention, a lightning fast primary. Who may be behind this? Well, Lincoln Party grifter Steve Schmidt, a longtime Republican operative who launched the third party campaign of Dean Phillips. So when you hear pass the torch, that came from Steve Schmidt and the pass the torch USA Super PAC that he launched with Phillips, raising hundreds of thousands of dollars to try to replace Biden. Schmidt, like any Republican, doesn't want a black progressive woman president. 
Check the show notes for more on the Pass the Torch USA Super PAC and ask yourself, why are so many Democratic centrists, especially in these tightly held Republican districts or states where they need the Republican vote and need the Republican money, are using that phrasing, pass the torch? Where is that coming from? We can believe our eyes and ears from all the available reporting that this effort to push out Biden isn't geared towards Kamala running for president in his place. This isn't a clear plan. There, that's the problem here. So I, I've had some messages from Gaslight Nation listeners saying like Biden needs to go, Kamala needs to step up, but that's not what we're being served with here by the Democratic Party elite. Some Democratic leaders say that, but most don't. Most are calling for an open convention. Listen to their own words. This has been obvious for a while now. And then last night, AOC confirmed it. Last night, Last night, AOC published an hour-long Instagram Live opening by quickly highlighting her work right now with the Biden administration to get solar power to Puerto Ricans impacted by the island's failing electrical grid. What is AOC's agenda sticking by Biden? Listen to her words carefully. She's actively working with the Biden administration from student loan debt, yes, which just got challenged in what's going to be a legal battle in the courts, and getting money from the White House to help address critical infrastructure in Puerto Rico. AOC support for Biden is present tense. They're colleagues. She wants their work together to continue. She's getting a lot done through the Biden administration to help people where it matters most. She sees government working in the lives of the people she cares about. She's riding with Biden because she's getting shit done through the Biden administration. Why would she want to give that up for some Steve Schmidt appointed unknown. Okay, so according to her and much of the reporting we're seeing, there's no clear plan on who would replace Biden. Many of those speaking out against Biden aren't rallying folks around Kamala. Instead, they want us to lead to an open convention and yada, yada, yada. So here is AOC in her own words. I'm going to say what a lot of these po folks aren't saying. I'm just going to say it. If you think that there is consensus among the people who want Joe Biden to leave, that Kamala, that they will support Kamala, Vice President Harris, you would be mistaken. And I'm gonna say that because if they're gonna come out and say all their little things on background off, off the record, but they're not gonna be fully honest, I'm gonna be honest for them. I'm in these rooms. I see what they say in conversations. A lot of them are not just interested in removing the president. They are interested in removing the whole ticket. So this is very unusual to skip a vice president. We have this system of succession for a reason. The vice president is ready on day one to take the place of the president. Um, it, it's, you know, it's very disrespectful to bypass her and just say, no, let's find somebody else. The Democrats, and the other issue with this whole open convention nonsense, the Democrats are supposed to be the boring party of good governance. Instead, they're courting chaos with this open convention talk. At a time when Biden and Kamala have been leading a global war, against Russian fascism, determined to destroy our democracy from within and infiltrate many of our allies through spies, active measures, disinformation operations, election dark money financing, and so on, who would be better to step into that role than Kamala? What does Josh Shapiro, who I like, governor of Pennsylvania, know about Kremlin active measures? I have no idea because he hasn't been pushed extensively on these issues. Do you see what I'm saying? You cannot play musical chairs with who will be the leader of the free world. Bypassing Kamala is not an option for so many practical reasons, and it's not clear that switching candidates at this late stage is possible in some states, given that every state oversees their own election laws. And then you have waiting in the wings, 
the Federalist Society, that will challenge the outcome of the election, setting it up to the Supreme Court to determine the winner if any campaign laws are violated during this whole dust up of switching from Biden to someone else at this late stage. Do you think it's really going to go smoothly? No, it's going to be chaotic. And again, every single state in the union has control and determines how they vote and they have different deadlines. That's why they're trying. That's why they needed to push Biden through electronically at this stage to meet some of those deadlines for the ballots. Um, so obviously you're going to have the Federal Society try to find some technicality to get the Democrats on and send this election up to the Supreme Court. It's going to be another Gore v. Bush horror show where the, where the Supreme Court back in 2000 stopped the recount in Florida anointing war, soon to be war criminal George W. Bush as president. And that was traumatic for our nation and the world. Um, so I don't have to tell you, longtime listeners, like how defiled our courts have been come even worse since then. In America, it's not about justice. It's about who installed the judge. Look at how the Trump immunity ruling by the Supreme Court may not even apply to Hunter Biden. Because it, it does, it comes down to who the judge is and who appointed that judge. That's so-called justice in America. Personally, as you know, I think Biden should stay in for reasons I've given in past episodes, uh, recent ones. I'll link to in the show notes. And if he must step down, the only option is Kamala. And they're going to do to her or, who, or whoever would replace Biden what they're currently doing to Biden. Why? Because conservatives own our media and they want their Trump tax cuts paid for by you and me. It's as simple as that. The polls have also been wrong in 2022, the midterms where Democrats defied historical trends in a midterm. Um, so they were wrong in 2022. The polls were astronomically wrong in 2016. And there, you know, every election, there are a lot of bad polls out there that are straight up dis disinformation because it's warfare. You've got bad actors paying for polls uh, that are just dirty polls. You have um, pollsters not revealing their conflict of interest that's not being disclosed. Um, for reasons I've already laid out in previous episodes, I really strongly believe that Biden and Harris will win. Uh, if Obviously, if, I, I, I think people at this point will are just terrified out of their minds and are seeing what we're seeing and more Americans see it than than I think the mainstream media is is giving space for. How do I know this? Oh my gosh, so many examples of this on over the years of the show. For instance, one that comes to mind. Do you remember when um when when the cover-up king Bill Barr Trump's attorney general who was installed to to the cleanup guy of, of Trump's crimes when he pushed through that four-page cover-up memo saying that the Mueller report exonerated Trump. We hadn't even seen the Mueller report yet. No, no journalist had. And yet the mainstream media ran with that story on the front page of all the newspapers saying that Mueller exonerates Trump. That wasn't true. And the famously reticent Mueller had to break his silence to have his own press conference saying this isn't true. And every single American should have their pants on fire over what the Mueller investigation actually did find. It was really damning. And um, before Mueller even had his press conference to alert the American public, just based off of the cover-up, the four-page cover-up by Barr, um, the polling showed that the majority of Americans didn't believe that shit and they wanted to see the report itself, the Mueller report. And so that's why Americans, when you're raising your kids, when you want to be able to leave your house safely, when you want to have clean water, drink, and clean air, when you want to make sure that your, your home where you live is going to be overrun by a bunch of criminals, klepto klept uh, kleptocracy and dictators, um, you know, you're, you're going to pay attention on some visceral level. So I really do believe there's more of us out there than the mainstream media is even acknowledging or cares about. And we see that again and again. With, um, so I think it's going to be a Dewey defeats Truman situation where in the 1950s, Eight presidential election, the conventional wisdom was that Dewey would defeat Truman. That's what all the polls were saying. The Chicago Tribune even had to, you know, having to go to print early back then, they printed on the front page, Dewey defeats Truman. But the polls, surprise, were all wrong. And Truman famously held up that front page of the big giant grin and the rest is history. So stop the dark money funded chaos and disrespecting the first black vice president of the United States, the first woman vice president of the United States, and the most pro-labor president since FDR. 
this is the ticket. This is the nominee. We had a primary al already. And if the, if the people calling for Biden to go were good faith actors, they would not be pulling this chaotic bullshit of a democratic open convention, which is going to be chaos, which is going to be a feeding frenzy of dark money special interests. All right. That's how you know it's bullshit. That's how you know it's bullshit. So I stand by the, the progressives who get things done, who build coalition, um, who ha I've watched evolve and become stronger and stronger over the years in terms of uh, their own um, journey of, of being public servants. And I, I, I feel I trust them and I trust Bernie. I trust AOC. And if they're standing by Biden, I think there's very good reason for that. And I trust it. And it, obviously black women, I trust because they have been the ones leading the charge against authoritarianism in America throughout this country's history since the first slave ships arrived. All right, everyone, let's get to some listeners' questions from the great folks who are subscribed at the Democracy Defender level and higher. Thank you for your questions. To hear this full bonus episode, make sure you're subscribed at the Truth Teller level or higher to get all bonus shows, all shows ad-free, invites to virtual events. Get on the guest list for the September 16th live taping at the Ukrainian Institute of America right around the corner from the beautiful Met Museum and more when you join our Patreon community. And obviously you'll see me freaking out in the chat room <laughs> as I do from time to time. Discounted annual subscriptions are available, so stay with us as we stay grounded together in this critical time ahead. Thank you to everyone who supports the show. We could not make Gaslit Nation without you. And now here is Trump entering the convention to James Brown. It's a man's world because we know, we know it is. We get it. We saw Katie Britt in her kitchen with her big giant cross and her, her, and, her and Jesus in her womb. Um, all right, everyone. So to hear the full episode, make sure to subscribe. Take us out of the dark. All right, let's get to some questions. Paige writes, Hi, Andrea. Thanks for another great show. Question, are there Russian lobbying groups equivalent to APAC? If so, what are they? 